The Masterson method is an integrated form of equine bodywork where you work with the horse, not on the horse. So horse participation is everything. And it is very soft. Sometimes the softer you are, the more you get. It's about releasing accumulated tension in the key junctions of the horse that affect performance. But in the rescue horses, it's about releasing the tension in the key junctions of the horse for their general well-being. Because we're not trying to affect their performance because we don't ask them hopefully to do that anymore because they've performed enough probably. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick evaluation to see if he says anything because it's quite important to listen to what he has to say. So he's very vocal in his reactions, so we'll see. And I'm just going to do a quick evaluation to see if there's anything, a bit of tension in the part in the TMJ there at the junction of the jaw. We've got one. Shoulders on the left, good. With us. Nothing. His face. What's happening? And again, some tension at the jaw. Which is interesting because all your horses are bitless, right? Yeah. Good boy. He doesn't say a lot except for tension at the jaw. So usually the rescue horses are very um, stoic. So it's like peeling the layers off an onion. You have to take a little one layer at a time to see what's going on underneath. And I'm just gonna go through a little bladder meridian with him, which everyone can do on their own horses basically. And we just start at the pole and we're just watching the eyes for any changes of expression. Like that. And when he when his eyes softens, we just wait a little bit. And this is just a very simple way of releasing accumulated tension in your own horse. Everybody can do this. Children are brilliant at it. There. Good boy. And there's the relief. So we had a little bit of tension here. He indicated where it was. I waited. It's called search response stay release. And then when the release is, you just give him a minute to process that. And they ask for some more. <laughs> and then this is what you do on both sides, all the way along. Just searching for small areas of tension, <clears throat> waiting with hardly any pressure at all. So air gap, really. If you could break an egg yolk, it's too hard. It's too hard. This is how soft this is. So horses are incredibly sensitive animals. They keep everything inside. Sometimes you don't think there's anything actually. We're not looking for things that are wrong. We're just helping the horse to help themselves because sometimes the tension is so deep that they can't release it by themselves. So we're just helping them to do that. You can imagine how effective this would be in a top, in a top dressage horse, for example. Once the tension's gone, they get wings. <laughs> Who's that? Ready? Do you know about his history? What happened before, where he was before? No. He's quite an anxious horse, even though he acts like he's very calm. Whenever his, his friends are removed, he gets a bit crazy. Okay. Good boy. Mm. So that's typical of what you've just said, is the fact that when you do the initial evaluation, there's nothing. He's like, yeah, I'm fine. But the softest touch, and he's indicating that he's quite stressed all the way along because he's keeping it all in. Because in a, in a herd, someone has to be brave, even if they're not brave someone has to take that role, <laughs> so it might be him. <laughs> there we go. And as the nervous system begins to process the technique, they tend to go into this sort of twilight zone. You've got to be very careful because obviously they could... <laughs> you know when you go to sleep sometimes and then you wake up, you feel like you're falling? 
they can do that sometimes and that's that's really interesting as they start to to process the the technique and, and embrace the relaxation of it I think. He's beginning to relax his body now which is great. Not so easy in a hot country because obviously is it a blink or is it a fly? So also you can watch their ears, their ears give a lot away. There you go, that's definitely a blink. So he's got quite a lot of tension along his back, which we'll get to later. Because once we've done the initial evaluation, a quick bladder meridian, both sides, then we know where to focus our, our um, deeper techniques. It's really important to just let them be. If he wants to walk about, he can walk about. If he wants to go back to his paddock and have his treatment there, he can do that. It's nice to that if he can stand not being tied up, which is lovely, because then he's free to move if he wants to move. You okay? So initially he's not saying a lot, as with all the rescue horses. Some releases here in the sacrum area, tension at the pole and a little bit on the shoulder, but not too much yet. We'll see what happens next. Again. And again. Steady, steady, steady. And again. If I wasn't demonstrating the bladder meridian, I would start with the front leg releases because it puts them in a little state of relaxation. But I didn't do it with him because is it his right his left shoulder that you thought was stiff? Is it? Yeah, I don't know which one. To be quite right. Let's see. And again. Again. Gently wiggle the vertebrae in the neck, or rather the cervical vertebrae of the neck. A lot of people think the neck bones are here, but actually they're here. <laughs> here we've got a massive ligament that attaches to these neck bones. So heads are really heavy. They put a lot of, they have a lot of tension there. Pole, jaw, shoulders. Most horses can flex left and right but then they're doing it from the shoulder from the shoulder joint like that what we want them to do is to flex on every vertebrae so it 
it softens their way of going and then they'll go into a natural balanced outline rather than forcing it. A bit stiff aren't you? Hey? A little bit. A bit more. Good boy. A bit more. Wee bit in. One more. Good. Super. Super. That's better. So what I'm asking for is just little wiggles, tiny wiggles of these vertebrae to release the tension <clears throat> inside each joint. He's much more flexible to the right than he is to the left. And that is actually the opposite of most horses. Most horses go easier to the left than they do to the right. And he's going easier to the right than the left. Like us, left-handed or right-handed. Here we are, eh? More. So I'm going to do more work on the left side because that was stiffer. Just asking for a little bit more. One more. Wiggle, wiggle. Then when I reach a bit of tension, I can lift the head a bit. You can all try this, but less is more. So the softer you are, the more likely they are. I could force him to bend, but he'd bend from here. He'd just bend like that. But if you ask and wait and then ask and wait, he can do it. We be in. And each time he can get a little bit further, because each time he trusts me that I'm not going <laughs> to... And it's stiff, so it's hard for him. Doing good. And this side's so different. This side's stiffer, so let's see. A little bit more. Wee be in. He's very clever, because he's doing it on his own now. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> he's got it. He's got this. Good boy. Wee be in. And you can see it in his face, as that tension's releasing, he's actually beginning to enjoy the sensation of it. But it's so important when he's had enough to just let him stop. I'd never ask him to work through it. If this is as far as he can go today, that would be it. Because that's that in itself is a huge step forward for him. Better. It's just going to release a bit, I think. One more. One more. That's it. Good. And it's important to give them some space in between just so he can process. So he showed he's got quite a lot of tension on his mandibular. You get their teeth done a lot here, don't you? They get, yeah, every year they're done, I know that. So it's not that. So I'm just gonna put my finger in his mouth in between the space where they don't have any teeth, of course. <laughs> and again, you can do this to your own horses. It just loosens the junction here. They really don't mind it. When they're in this relaxed state, they really don't mind it. Um, and just let them chew for a bit. You could either do it like this, which is the safer option, or you could put your finger, your thumb on the roof of the mouth. And they just let them chew for a bit. No pressure. If he protests, I'd stop. He's fine. A bit more. One more, one more, one more. There we go, good boy. Super. Okay. It's quite a good exercise to do. If you were riding with a bit, it's quite a good exercise to do before and after riding with a bit. But I do find it's, even when you're riding bitless, to relax the jaw before you ride and after. Good boy. Most horses hold their tension at the pole. So even if I was called out to see a horse that we thought had a back problem, I would still release the pole before I started working on the back. I'd release the pole and the hind end before I started working on the back. Because if this is tight, everything is tight. Good boy. All this fussing and fiddling about, this is all part of the release. He doesn't want really to show in front of us that he's going to let it go, so. <laughs> well, I'm glad I undid that a bit. <laughs> Good boy. <clears throat> like I said before, heads are really heavy. Really heavy. And if they can, you can help them take the weight of their head sometimes. You can release enormous amount of tension at the pole. A bit more. Good boy. One more. There you go. There you go. 
I'm just trying to get the head down gently so that we can release more tension at the pole. So we've done it head up, head down, mouth release, jaw release. And once they're relaxed at the head, you can do a lovely massage behind the ears. A lot of the rescue horses don't like to put their heads down. I have one. <laughs> we'll see. Ready? Good boy. Good job. Put down a bit. So now I'm just trying to get behind the shoulder to release tension from that area. Interesting thing about a horse's shoulder is it's actually hanging really, only supported by muscle. It doesn't have a joint like we, you know, like we have a joint. It doesn't have it. So it's literally just supported by muscles, bones. And you can see when you reach a point that is tense, that he softens and lets you in. There we go. Good. And again. Yeah, good. Super. I got more tension on the left shoulder than the right shoulder, more tension on the left neck than the right. And now we're just doing a little withers wiggle. Interesting thing about the withers is they're an extension of the, the rib, well, they're the ribs, but they're behind the shoulder. So you can't really get to them. Like you can manipulate the ribs here because you can feel them. But here, they're behind the shoulder. So if you w wiggle the withers very gently, you are actually working the ribs that are behind the shoulder because they do it to each other, don't they, when they're grooming each other. Very effective, really simple, and it's going to release all the tension behind the shoulders, so you can do this for him. He likes it a lot. <laughs> a lot. There we go. Good boy. Sometimes the tiniest movements that have the biggest impact. Oh! <laughs> that was angry. That was angry. <laughs> Come on. 